Ms. Comrade, I'm Aramid and welcome to the video. Today, as you've probably already guessed, we will be talking about the GP5 guest mask. From Stalker to Metro, from Civil Defense Handbooks to your Babushka's Closet, this thing is everywhere, rightfully earning its title of the ultimate Soviet gas mask. The name GP5 translates to Civilian Gas Mask Model 5. It is the most widespread gas mask on post-Soviet space. In fact, more of these were made than there were people in the USSR. Briefly, short of a billion. The reason for such numbers is the Cold War. The GP5 gas mask was in production from 1961 to 1989. At that time, Western weapons of mass destruction were a fearsome threat. The Soviet people had to be protected. The gas mask can be found in large quantities to this day, stored in fallout shelters and other institutions. Design-wise, the GP5 is a collective image of its predecessors, with some improvements. Simple, compact, effective. From the factory, these come in wooden crates. A single one assembles 40 kits of different sizes and includes an instruction manual. A kit, or a loadout, includes a face piece, a gas mask filter, a carry bag, and a pack of antifa. The gas mask is issued in a simple bag with metal buttons. It has three compartments an adjustable shoulder strap, as well as a waist tie on the back side. There is always a printed stamp on the inside with production information. For example, the factory emblem and the manufacturing date. This one was made on the 8th month of 1988. The face piece for the GP5 comes in two variations. The SHM-62 in older kits and the SHM-62U in more recent kits. Where the name translates to Helmet Mask Model 1962 and the U is for Improved. The difference between the two types is solely in the thickness of rubber. The improved version has thinner rubber, is slightly lighter and more comfortable to wear. Both are grey, however some sources also tell of black rubber SHMP face pieces being included instead. It has three stamps on the right side. The number of the press form, the manufacturing date of the face piece itself, which here is the third quadrant of 1974, judging by the three dots, and the size stamp. The general size range for the GP5 gas mask is from 0 to 4, where 0 is small enough to fit the child and 4 is for a large-faced adult. This one is size 3 with the letter U. This suggests that this face piece is of the SHM-62U variation. On the left side, only the size stamp repeats. The face piece is composed of two main parts, the valve box and the goggle unit. Both are attached to the rubber with pressed metal and fabric tape underneath. The goggle unit is simple with round glass lenses. The valve box consists of an inhale section and an exhale section. Both are double valved for effect. The inhale section leads from the filter thread on the outside straight to the goggle unit on the inside, clearing fog from the glass in every inhale. The exhale section goes straight out from the spot where it can remove all the condensing moisture. The filter, or the FPK, the filtering absorbing box, is very simple. It is a metal box type filter. There are a GP5 marking, some sort of technical number, and a manufacturing date of the filter on the side. This one is also from late 74. When not in use, both top and bottom are sealed with a threaded cap and rubber plugs. On top of the thread, which attaches to the face piece, it is the Soviet standard 40mm thread. The inside layout is also simple. There are two layers oriented horizontally. The bottom one is fabric, it is an anti-dust and anti-aerosol layer, and the top one is chemically active and it is composed of activated carbon. It is protected by metal netting from top and bottom. To solve the ever-present problem of goggles fogging up, each gas mask is equipped with a pack of anti-fog film. It comes in a metal container marked with NP for non-fogging film. It is sealed with fabric tape, but if you open one up, which sometimes is tough, you are instantly met with a label that tells us the factory it was made on, the number of the batch, 302, with this one, the fact that there are six units included, or rather six pairs, and the date of production, April 1977. The anti-fog is installed into the goggle unit from the inside. It latches onto the inner metal parts, rather the rings of the goggle unit, and sits well. It is replaced whenever needed, but generally, as practice shows, a pair should last as long as the gas mask in real use condition. You probably noticed that there are fewer things in the kit than there are pockets on the back. Now, that is because not everything that is handed out alongside the gas mask comes from the gas mask factory. The pockets are intended for these. A fresh slice of Tarkov cheese, 
an AI-102 individual medical kit, and an IPP8 anti-chemical pack. In fact, these pockets are sized perfectly for them, from the factory. If not these, the pockets can fit standard issue Soviet bandaging material or other personal belongings of need. In the West, people like to speculate if the GP5 and other Soviet means of individual protection fit together with NATO standard filters. The short answer is yes. You see, the thread on Soviet and Western filters is the same, 40 millimeters, almost identical. What is different, though, is something called the step of the thread. This way, it may be hard to attach a Western filter to a Soviet gas mask, but, as again practice shows, if you manage and if you apply some, some force, sheer force of will, I said if you... If you apply some sheer force of will, it works. When using the GP5, it is important to pack it properly. The big compartment of the bag holds the filter and the face piece. The filter just goes in bottom down, upright, while the face piece, you have to fold it to protect the glass. And then you put it inside. The end piece have their place in a sub pocket on the side, and additional materials go in respectively. The last thing is the waist tie. You collect it compact and you put it in the pocket too, so that it doesn't get in the way. The instruction manual expects the gas mask to be used in three positions. This actually applies to most Soviet gas masks. The first one is the marching position, but everything in the bag is explained. It is used when the gas mask is on you, but there is no imminent threat present. The second one is the ready position. The pouch is open and the waist strap is tied as the gas mask is upright and put together. Plugs removed, obviously, if you don't want to suffocate. It is used when a threat is imminent. And finally, the combat position. The gas mask is on the user as he responds to an active threat. Overall, it's a gas mask. There isn't much more to say about it. It is designed to protect the respiratory system, eyes, and skin of the face of the wearer. It is very simple, reliable, and very much usable. Without getting in depth, I can tell you that this thing can protect your babushka from radioactive dust, certain biological agents, and common poison and gases in adequate concentrations. That is, when she goes to the zone to collect mushrooms for your soup. As for right now, this is it. But if you enjoy this kind of thing, you might as well stick around on the channel. More stuff is coming soon. Давай!